why is cybersecurity training so darn expensive? Isn't there a huge amount of open cybersecurity jobs and not enough workers to fill those jobs? In this video, we're going to walk through the four tier system of cybersecurity training, including the intended audience for each tier, examples of certifications, and how you can move between different tiers. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses without distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure to sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description to get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is in the description. All right, let's get into the video. When it comes to cybersecurity training, there are so many different training vendors out there, lots of certifications that you can get. Everything varies in pricing from either free up to tens of thousands of dollars. One of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video is because the training vendor eLearn Security switched to a higher pricing model for their courses, and it stirred up some discussion in the community. Specifically, if you just care about my opinion on the subject, here it is. I think it's a positive change. As an example, I bought the eCPPT course for just under $2,000 with unlimited lab time. And now with these changes, it would be $2,000 per year for all of their courses, and then you pay $400 per certification exam. Now I want you to think about that and do the math. If I bought two courses, let's say for $2,000 each, the cost is significantly less now with this new model. Even though the cost isn't necessarily inexpensive, let's be honest, these courses aren't meant for beginners. Now I understand that penetration testing is a very interesting subject and a lot of people wanna study it, but honestly, not a lot of people go into it directly for their first job. Honestly, it's a positive thing because it's going to actually force people to learn the basics before they just dive right into a more advanced class. Now that you have my opinion on the subject, let's go ahead and dive into the four tier system of trainings that exist. When we talk about tier four training, we're referring to any training that doesn't cost you any money, it's free. And what about the sources for tier four? Well, training can be found at a lot of different sources, things like YouTube, articles online, or even podcasts that you can subscribe to. Now for certifications, there aren't really any free certifications that are worth getting, but much of the free training that exists is typically geared towards beginner certifications, specifically from CompTIA is one of the major places. As far as pros, number one, of course, the biggest pro with tier four training is that you don't have to pay anything. Tier four is extremely valuable when you first start your career, because honestly, you probably don't have the funds to pay for training, and you might not even have a training budget at your job. The second pro has to deal with knowledgeable instructors that understand how free training can help the industry and they wanna give back to the future of the workforce. As an example, I offer a lot of free training on my YouTube channel and there are some others that do the same on similar or different subjects. What about the cons? Well, due to tier four training being absolutely free, you might not receive the best quality training, meaning the instructor doesn't know what they're talking about or even maybe the learning experience is poor, things like, bad audio and distracting interactions. The second thing is free training will only get you so far because there are certain subjects that take a lot of time and effort to explain. And honestly, it might not be worth it for the instructor if the training is free. Remember, the instructors are volunteering their time if the resources are free. So make sure that you thank them. Tier three moves into a paid training model and will cost under about $1,000 but typically the training is gonna run well under that amount. The sources can vary a lot at this level of training, but just to name a few, you have CBT Nuggets, Cyberary IT, and also on my personal website, you can access all of my courses for significantly less than the rest of them. Common certifications that tier three training is going to prepare you for include things like the CISSP, anything from CompTIA like Security Plus and CYSA Plus, and even Cisco certifications, just to name a few. As far as the pros, with tier three training, you can really cover a lot of the job requirements that companies are gonna list in their job postings. For example, with the CISSP, you can get tier three training, official study guide books, and the exam attempt for close to $1,000. Also, a lot of tier three training offer flexible payment plans, such as annual, monthly. For instance, on my website, I offer both an annual and a monthly subscription. What about the cons? A lot of enterprise technology training is going to cost more than the tier three limit. For example, some vendors only offer training 
through more expensive courses. Also, tier three training typically isn't going to include everything that you need for a certain job. For example, you might learn something about hacking, but you're not gonna get that in-depth information about, for instance, web applications. Tier two is where you start to have a lot of bootcamp style training courses. Sources include SANS, InfoSec Institute, and several others, but you can see the price goes anywhere from 1,000 to almost $10,000. Some of these certifications include GIAC, OSCP from Offensive Security, and eLearn Security. All right, so let's talk about the pros. Tier two training typically covers a lot about certain certifications or a subject area. Remember, you're paying a very high amount for this training, so there's a very high expectation that you're gonna get the appropriate materials and exposure. With vendors such as SANS, you're also getting the exact training material that the GIAC certification exams are based on, so that's a huge benefit, and you're gonna get updated materials as you renew your certification. What about the cons? Well, the major con here is that tier two is very pricey for most people because you could pay anywhere, again, from $1,000 up to $10,000 per course. Also, there aren't as many scholarship opportunities as there are with something like a college degree or even some of these other tiers. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and full courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. Of course, at the very top, we have the college degree. Now, as far as certifications with college degrees, there might be some certification that the university has created, but honestly, unless it's an industry recognized certification, you aren't gonna get much credit with employers outside of the degree. As far as pros, degrees can be required at certain companies or even for certain jobs, like a management level job. Also, you get to work on your soft skills, such as communicating through verbal and written forms, which is crucial in the workplace. As far as cons, College degrees tend to be the most expensive training that you're gonna get. You also aren't always gonna come out with strong technical skills that you can immediately put into place when you join a job. Now that we've covered the tiers, a common question that always comes up is how do you get training in different tiers? There's no question that most of us are gonna start out of that tier four training category. Typically, we aren't gonna have a lot of money to spend on training and we probably don't have an employer that wants to spend additional money on our training. It's completely okay. Many of the certifications I listed in the tier four category are geared towards beginners. That means the cost is pretty low and it should be reachable by almost everybody. We're talking about certifications that cost around $300. In order to get to tier three, there are a few different things that can happen. First of all, you might start getting raises and promotions pretty quickly over a few years as you start getting certified, which is gonna allow you to fund tier three training. You could also consider changing companies or changing the role that you're in in your current company, and hopefully they have a training budget. Don't be afraid to change companies after a few years because you can actually make drastic improvements if you make good moves. Tier two training is where a lot of people want to get training because let's face it, tier two training is typically awesome and it covers a lot of different topics that you need to know in one single place. In order to get tier two training, you simply have to get paid more or have a training budget from your job. There really isn't an argument here because, well, you have to get paid more or you have to have a training budget. That's it. In all honesty, a lot of the training that falls into tier two, especially at that higher level, is not geared towards individuals paying for it themselves. Vendors are looking for the companies to send their employees. For example, if you go to a SANS course, the course itself is gonna be around $7,000, but it's gonna get you to about $10,000 if somebody has to travel, you're probably not gonna fund that yourself. Now, since we're talking about SANS, SANS does offer a work study program that cuts the cost way down and makes it more attainable for individuals. So I would definitely look into that program if you're interested. As far as tier one, tier one's open to a lot of different people and it's the more traditional route to get a degree. Cost-wise, you're looking at the highest expense for most situations, but you do get to pay it off over time which could help. There really isn't a transition from tier two to tier one, but it could help you in your career to have a degree. I won't go too much into that discussion for this video though. Now, question of the day, what is your training budget either personally or at your job? Let me know down in the comment section because I'm really curious to see what people are working with. In this video, we reviewed my opinion on the new pricing model for e-learn security training, the four tiers of cybersecurity training that exist, and how to navigate to higher level training tiers. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for training without distracting interruptions 
or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.